Proverbs chapter 27 Boast not thyself of tomorrow. James chapter 4 verse 13 You don't even know if you got a minute. Never mind tomorrow. You know, you take, I was listening to uh, Lester, I mean, uh, Listen to preaching last night and was talking about the, the Titanic. Everybody in that ship was all looking forward and sending telegrams off to New York and they never made it. There are people that this morning they, they kissed their loved one goodbye and, and you know, what do you want for dinner? I'll have my favor. I'll make your favorite for dinner. And they never came home. And never will come home. And that's today. There are people that are in the hospital right behind us. Never would even figure they'd be in the hospital. There are people who are, are in the hospital, nursing homes, that when the nurse came in this morning, they were dead. We have to-do lists, shopping lists, errands. Our phones have little calcula uh, little calendars, appointment books, and you don't know what God has for you. There's only one man that knew the date, the time, and the hour he was going to die, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You don't know. I'm going to cut the lawn tomorrow. And one accident may make you paralyzed for the rest of your life. I'll sit down and write a letter to that person. You may not be able to comprehend tomorrow because of a stroke. Let another man praise thee, and not thy own mouth. A stranger, and not thine own lips. Don't look forward to get the praise of man and the rewards of man. Jesus said, let not thy right hand know what the left hand is doing, or vice versa. Don't do things for man's honor and glory. Now, if somebody comes up to you and says, hey, that's a good job you did. If you didn't ask for it, okay. But if you do it, so people will look at you and so people will reward you. You've gotten your reward from God. There's a thing in some churches, they got the dollar dance or march, whatever you want to call it. And they start off with the dollar. Everybody lines up who's going to give a dollar. Then the five dollar line. Then the ten. They keep on going to that last guy gives the, you know, hundred dollars, whatever the highest bill. And he's the last one. Everybody, hey! And he's going to go to heaven and think God's going to reward him. No, you got the praise. I believe in my heart with the Bible. You can lose crowns because you did something because you wanted someone else to, to recognize you. You can go knocking on doors and not earn anything because you went knocking on doors just so say, hey, look, I went knocking on doors. You can go on the street and preach. And not earn rewards because you want people to see. Listen, Jesus said that even the Pharisees, they go out and stand in the street corner and have these loud prayers. Everyone, listen to me. Here I go. I'm going to pray. Am I so pray? Oh, you hear that prayer? There's no reward. I also believe. Uh, that's something else. That's not that. Don't do things so people will praise you. You do things for God, and if God wants to send somebody along to, to praise you and, and give you a little honor and credit, then receive it. A stone is heavy, and to stand weighty. But a fool's wrath, continue from yesterday, is heavier than them both, unable to carry. He's got so much foolish wrath that he can't carry it. 
and it's kind of funny. Wrath is cruel. You know what Adolf Hitler did for wrath to the Jews? He hated them. You know what the Catholic Church has done to Bible believers in wrath? And you, you, you know, if you ever looked up online all the instruments of torture during the Middle Ages? It makes you do. And anger is outrageous. You ever done anything angry? And you wish you were sorry? That spur a moment of anger? You didn't think about it? That's why you do not. You do not punish your children in anger. Calm down. Settle it down. But who is able to stand before envy? Unthankful. And do you know what Pilate said? He said the reason why those Pharisees and those Sadducees and those scribes and the high priests brought Jesus Christ before his seat because of envy. He got the crowds. He got the people. He healed them. Can you imagine those, those priests? They're, they're working in the tabernacle in the temple. Da, 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 da. This guy comes walking up. All right. He's got his offering. Well, what would you do? I was a leprous man. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Okay. I think it's Leviticus 13, 14. Okay. Okay, yeah, you were lepers. We can see that, and we can see you are healed. Yeah, hey, uh, yeah. Have we ever had a, a leprous man come up to us and be healed? Not in my day. Search the scriptures. Has any leprous person come to the temple to be healed? I mean, to be that was healed, and no. Who did this to you? Jesus. Urgh. Envy. You know, you find me a spot in the, in the Gospels where Jesus did a miracle of healing somebody. Lame, blind, deaf, dumb. Find me where those Sadducees and the, and the Pharisees were over, overjoyed. If the Bible records, they, if the people praise God, you carried your bed, bad Sabbath, Urgh. you're not allowed in the temple no more. But wait, wait a minute. I mean, can you picture you're in a church service? You see somebody, your brother, whatever ailment he's had, he comes walking to church and he has it no more. It's not the time for celebration. It's preaching time. I mean, envy. They're unthankful. And you know what? Envy is worse than wrath and anger. And it causes bitterness. And it gets bitterness. I had, for somebody, I had a root of bitterness. And I, it took a while to get rid of it. If you can get rid of it. It's one of those weeds that, you know, you chop it down, even more come up. Back where I came from in Connecticut, we had this cane, this bamboo thing. Man, I used everything, even gasoline, I couldn't get rid of that stupid plant. And that's envy. That's a picture of envy and, and jealousness and unthankfulness. The more Jesus did, the more they became unthankful. Because they were turning to Jesus and not to them. Open rebuke is better than secret love. You say, what's that verse talking about? How about preaching? How about when a preacher gets up on that pulpit and rips your fire? Turns your butt loose. Yet nobody knows it but you and the Holy Spirit. But it was an open rebuke. It's better than secret love. Oh, I just love you. I'm not going to tell you anything. I'll just preach, you know, just give you nice little fairy tales and, and flowery love and all that. 
You know, it's there's just times that you know you gotta tell somebody say you know what I can tell you haven't looked in the mirror because you got ketchup all over your face. Instead of just let them walk around the whole day like that. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Accidental. Probably sorry and truly sorry. I mean, you ever been clowning around with somebody and you know you get popped in the eye? <laughs> you know? But the kisses of the enemy are deceitful. Luke twenty two forty eight. Now who was that? That's two men in the Bible, Absalom and, and Judas. Listen, the only reason why Judas kissed Jesus, it's the middle of the night. There were 11 of them, and then 12 counting Jesus. You got to know which one to take. You sure didn't want to get your hands on Peter. You imagine if they were taking Peter by accident. They got half a mile to turn around and say, you take him. Don't want this guy. The full soul loveth a honeycomb. He is so full. Oh man, no, get that thing away. Oh man, man, making my stick to my stomach. You ever had that? Just a smell of food. It's like, oh, that may, may be your favorite. Oh, if I eat one more. Now you're at the buffet. It's like, oh man, oh. But to a hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. You can put a bitter plate of herbs on his yum, 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 yum. You want to know if somebody comes up to you, oh, can, I, can you spare a dollar for something to eat? Okay. You go find somewhere where they, where they sell herbs. And plop down the plate. Here, here's some leaves and, and flour, whatever. You know, there you go. Well, what's that? It's your salad I just gave you. Well, I don't want that. Well, I guess you're not hungry. Right? There are some people out there that are so hungry, they will eat what you didn't eat that was thrown in a dumpster. That's hungry. Put that test. If you're going to an area where people are always asking you for money, carry a bag of leaves, basil leaves, and stuff like that. Can you spare a dollar for? Oh, I got some food right here. Here you go. Open it up. I don't want that. Then you're not hungry. As a bird that wanders. From her nest. A wanderer, is, there's no reason to leave. Not she's going to get food. Not she's going to get more nesting material. It just wanders off. I don't think birds do that. I don't think birds have an entertaining life. They leave the, the chicks behind and they go out. I have not yet seen two birds walking downtown, you know, checking out the sights. So is a man that wandereth from his place. Why? Should be home. By the way, with the honey, 52 times in the Old Testament and four times in the New Testament. The honeycomb is eight times in the Old Testament and once in the New Testament. And verse 7, and just note here, it's a law of supply and demand. You know, America may get to the point, you know what, we just may have to eat bitter things. We not, may not have a hamburger. And you know be the first people who will complain? Those who are welfare get free food. Every once in a while, I enjoy a good salad. But, you know, when I, when I go to the sandwich shop, I will pass on the spinach. But maybe one day I'll have to just eat dry spinach. And like it. 
and praise God and bow my head over and say, Lord God, I thank you for the spinach. Okay, verse number nine. Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart. Unless you bathe in it. And there's just some people out there. Please, don't use a bottle every morning. You gotta say that. I just like, wow. They need a smell of me or it goes off at the end of the door. Too much, too much, too much, too much. Well, they don't rejoice. The heart makes me sneeze. But there is ointment and perfume that, you know, it makes you, it makes you feel good, I guess. That's what the Bible says, so it has to be. So does sweetness of a man's friend by heartly counsel. You know, when, when your friend comes up to you and puts his arm around you and says, you know, you're walking a dangerous path. What you're doing is not, is not very good. That That is enjoyment. That is somebody who's looking out for you. Don't take it as a threat. Don't take it as, as a, you know, they're being cruel. Thy own friend. And thy father's friend. Forsake not. Guess who does that? Rehoboam. The son of Solomon. He goes to his father's friend, but then he goes to his high school class. His graduation class. He goes to them for advice and splits the nation into two that has not gotten back together yet. Neither go into thy brother's house in the day of thy calamity. you get that you choose friends you don't choose your relatives and when you got troubles and problems you don't go to your brother's house of thy calamity we read in a verse the other night that said um, Trying to find. Um, well, we read already where it says, you know what? Verse 17 of chapter 25. Withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be wary of thee and so hate thee. You know, you can show up at your neighbor's house too many times, unwanted, and be a pain. And you can be in calamity, and the Bible says, don't go run to your brother's house. You know, when you get in a husband and wife fight, don't go run into your brother's house. Don't go running back to your parents' house. That's Bible doctrine. You have violated God, and you have violated your house. Look what it said. For better is a neighbor that is near than a brother that is far off. But don't go to your neighbor's house too many times with your calamities. Maybe there's, there's some things that you just need to talk to somebody. But don't be too often. Scripture with Scripture. What we learn in chapter 25 and this chapter 27. You can be a pain in the neck to your to your neighbors. And not even know it. Because they're going to be graceful enough. My son, be wise. That's a smart. Be wise. Don't be stupid. And make my heart the dad's heart glad that I may answer him that reproaches me you know your son blah 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 fill in the blanks 
No, he's not. Say what you will about my child, but I know. And that's what that verse is saying. I know my, I know your son's deadbeat. This and that doesn't. Do, and it's like I know he's working hard. I know he's paying his bills. And he may have a few problems, but I know. Worry about your own. A prudent man, a man who thinks, looks, not quick to act, foreseeth the evil, and hideth himself. We're not a prudent nation of people. We tell them there's hell coming, death is coming, they don't hide themselves in Jesus. They mock, they laugh, but the simple pass on. Have you ever counted how many people just walk right by us? Have you ever counted how many people refuse a gospel track? Have you ever counted how many people drop the gospel track after they know what it is? How many people have you counted that do not listen? How many people have you counted that listen and then come over and ask what to do? And all those people, what are the next words? And are punished. John chapter 3 says, Condemnation. He that has not the Son shall not see life, shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Do you ever step back when you're witnessing, whether it's street, knocking on doors, passing on a gospel track, handing a cashier, whatever you're doing? Have you ever just stepped back and just, from your heart, pray that the Holy Spirit will do something? Because what you're doing for the Lord is what God has told you. Mark 16, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. But do you realize the receptacant is either going to get saved or they will be punished? There's no middle ground. They will either die in their sins and burn in hell, which you're trying to warn them, or they will get saved and get eternal life. I'm sorry, there's no purgatory. There's no eternal microwave oven. You set the power on low, medium, high, and you know, three minutes or three years, whatever you want to call it. Ding, okay, he comes out. We've got to learn and realize when we're dealing with people, if they continue the way they're going, they're going to be punished. And even if we're dealing with Christians to get right and do right, they will be punished by not earning crown, not getting a right to reign. You know, when, when somebody says, I'm a Christian, what are you doing? Don't harass them. Don't give them. Uh, explain to them exactly what you're doing and show them in the Bible because they don't know what you're doing and their church is not teaching them what they're doing, what you're doing. And you may be giving light to a Christian who is growing. We have dealt, Tracy and I have dealt with many people who, who stood and talked with us about our ministry and what we're doing. We don't know what they're doing when they went home today. There's one guy who didn't like what he was doing. Man, I had that guy in tears telling what the Bible said. Well, I don't know what he's doing today. There were a couple of girls who were just kind of shocked of the street ministry we had. We don't know what they, listen, those girls were innocent on that. We don't know what they're doing in the school where they are today. And I can keep on going. You're either going to get fruits that people are going to be punished, or you're going to get fruits where people are going to grow. Take his garment that is a surety for a stranger. Uh-oh. Remember we talked about sureties as people signing personal loans for people they didn't even know? Take his garment. Take his coat. And take a pledge of him for a strange woman. I'll sign this thing. 
Give me some collateral. Again, Tracy and I had a thing where somebody wanted us to sign. I'm not going to get into it, but I'm not going to do it. Throw your temper tantrum. The Bible forbids me to do it. I'm not laying my house. I'm not laying my car or a ring or whatever I have of value before the Bible says no. He that blesses his friend with a loud voice. 1 Samuel 15, 13. Rises early in the morning and shall be counted a curse to him. It's the wrong way. It's the wrong time. Hi, everybody. What you know, here is Joe. He is my best friend. Hi, Joe. Just want to call you. Three o'clock in the morning, dude. You wait. You. I'll see you eight o'clock in the morning to tell you our friendship is over with. See you at work. Good night. He said, "Who would do anything like that?" Well, it's right there in the Bible. Somebody does it. I. I've never lived verse 14, I've never heard of verse 14, but a continual dropping in a very rainy day, your roof leaks, drip, 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 it's annoying, and a contentious woman are alike. Annoying, annoying, annoying. Whosoever hideth her, hideth the wind. You know, yeah, wind hide it. It's impossible. You're not going to hide a contention. She's. You're, they're going to hear her. Oh, you know, she she's got a bad day today. You know, she's got a terrible headache or. Well, brother, you know what? <laughs> we just moved in two weeks ago, and this woman has had 14 days of a headache. <laughs> and the ointment of his right hand, which berayeth itself. You can't. That ointment, you, you, once you put it on, you can't see it. Iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. When you hang out with good people, you'll become good. Hang out with bad people, you'll become bad. You'll sharpen your skills. You'll become gooder or you'll become better. Whoso keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. Simple. So he that waiteth on his master shall be honored. As in water, as in water face answereth to face. It's a reflection. When you look down in the water and you see a reflection. So the heart of man to man. As you look in the water and see your face. When you deal with somebody with both your hearts together, you may see something in yourself that not, it took a reflection, a mirror, to see. Hell. 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 You mean Solomon was a hellfire preacher? You mentioned hell on the street and people don't like that word. Hell and destruction are never full. Look around. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. That's why you got the better and gooder. New and approved. Well, it's the same thing, just you're going to fall for it. 
And when we remove that new and approved label in six months, so you don't see it, nine months later we'll put a new and approved label back on. So you think it's even better, it's the same thing. We'll use advertising and make what you don't want, you want. You know, if you were to be content like Jesus said to be content, then you know what? You have a lot more money than what you have today. As the fining pot for silver, this is purifying silver, boiling it, and taking away the dross, we've already read about that, and the furnace for gold, so is a man to his praise. Remove the scum. Get the sin out of your life. It's, it's remarkable. It says a furnace for gold. And then what did Nebuchadnezzar throw the three Hebrew men in? And what was his passion? Is it possible that golden image, that, that same furnace that was made to make that golden image, that's what... Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo, Indigo went into? What made that image? They were tossed into it. And there's the idol on the outside. Everyone falling down to music. And there is the Lord Jesus Christ with the three Hebrew men in the fire. Something to add to think about. Though thou should bray a fool in mortar. I said... Uh, and wheat with a pestle. That's that you know little dish and that little kind of weird spoon that uh, shows the pharmacies used to. It's grinding. You take leaves and you grind them up. You take a, 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 a like a cork and you, you you grind it up. You take something solid and you make it a, a powder. Yet will not his fault foolishness depart from him. You can whip and beat that foolish guy and he's not going to get rid of it. And we read about the other night when we studied. I mean, th th there was a possibility of a fool getting right over a rich man. But here it says, look, you know what? He's going to be continually in his foolishness. And Psalm says, a fool has said in his heart, there is no God. He will go into eternal life. Live in that foolishness. Because when you go off into the lake of fire, you are without God. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks. As a pastor. Then Jesus gave a parable. One went, one went away. He went after the one. What are they eating? Where are they? Anything creeping around trying to get to them? And look well to thy herds. All right, there are certain animals that are flocks and there are certain animals that are herds. It's a group of animals. For riches are not forever. Got that? You can't take a U-Haul to the grave. And does thy crown endure to every generation? Now that is the an earthly human crown. Solomon could have taken his crown with him to his death and ain't going to do you no good in, in the grave. In Abraham's bosom. You think it showed up there? You think the rich man that went into hell in Luke 16, think he had his wallet? For riches are not forever, and does the crown endure to every generation. The hay appeareth. And the telegraph shows itself. And herds of the mountain are gathered for feeding the sheep. John 21, 16, and verse 17. The grass cometh, the hay cometh, but it's cut down to feed. There's grass that he said they cut and they, and they throw into a fire. The lambs are for thy clothing. 1 Corinthians 9.14, wool. You make yarn out of it. You make clothing. 
and the goats are for the price of the field. So there you have marketing in the Bible. Certain amount of goats equal a certain amount of land. And thou shalt have goats' milk enough for thy food. Now we just read that in First Corinthians nine seven tonight, as our family Bible reading. Go back and read what Paul has to say about the goats' milk. Um, I forget what Lester Roloff said. Um, something about goats' milk is the most purest. Milk of all the animals. It's close to mother's breast milk. There's something he said. I forget what he said. Doesn't break down or something. I forget exactly what he says. But he said. And he said it was a certain goat too. It's just, it's just purest and the best. So. For thy food. Notice milk is, is mentioned as food. You can make goat cheese. Yogurt, I guess. I don't know what much you can do with goat milk. Well, for this, excuse me, for the food of thy household, and for the maintenance of thy maiden. Oh, so you would feed your people from your flocks. You clothe them. You take care of them, even if they were workers in your house, not your family. As we close with another chapter.